Raiders, Brandon Montclair and Amy Reeder comes Rocket Girl. As with their previous collaboration, Halloween Eve, this was funded by Kickstart. Unlike Halloween Eve, however, this isn't a one-shot, but it's an ongoing series. So, is it worth a buy? Yes, yes, a thousand times yes. In an odd way, aspects of this book reminds me of the Japanese manga Gunsmith Cats. I'll get to that later. This is a time travel story that takes place in the future of 2013 and the present day of 1986. Confusing? Don't worry about it. It makes sense in the context of, of the story. And follows teenage cop the young Johansson. She's 15 years old. As she investigates the possible dirty dealings of Quantum Mechanics Corporation for Crimes Against Time, her investigation winds up sending her back in time to 1986, where she has to stop her future from ever happening. Don't worry, I didn't give you any spoilers. That's just merely the starting point of the story. Well, that's the summary, but let's take a look at some positives and negatives of this book. Pro, the overall brisk pacing of the story and fun dialogue between characters. The character design also is very colorful and fun to look at. Also, everyone has different faces and body types. I parked on this before in the past, but it really shouldn't be taken for granted. People are different, so they should have different looking faces. Also, this is a very strongly written and drawn character. The panel design and layout is also well thought out and narratively makes sense. One of the few things I remember of the 1980s was a trip me and my family had to New York City, and this looks like the New York City of 1986 and 1989 as well. The price of the trade paperback is also very reasonable at only $9.99. Also, another positive is the splash pages. They make sense. Sometimes when an artist does splash pages, it comes off very narratively empty. One thing I have against this book is there's not much character development except for the main character. Also, the brisk pacing may be too brisk. Earlier, I said this reminded me a bit of Gunsmith Cats. There are times in Gunsmith Cats that you can read entire chapters in just a few minutes. It's fun to look at, but maybe if the story at times weren't so fast, there could be more time to delve into the other characters. Thinking about it now, maybe this is only a minor nitpick because this initial arc sets up the character of the young and the story. I imagine in future issues we will get to know the rest of the cast as well. Characters. I'm only going to focus on the young since she has the bulk of the screen time. The young Johansson is a strong, clever character with a strong sense of duty and self-sacrifice, just like a real cop would. Not perfect, she doesn't have plot armor, so she does get hurt badly several times and even captured, but she is able to use her wits and physical skills and not just her fists. An example would be escaping from the interrogation scene. There are times when she is very mature and other times when she's very emotional, just like your average teenager. So I found her to be a very well-rounded character. When it came to creating her as a character, it seems like Brandon Montclair and Amy Reeder were really in sync with me. Now let me briefly talk about the topic of time travel. This is the type of time travel that I actually enjoy. It seems this will be the kind that if you change something in the past, you change your future. Unlike time travel in, say, Dragon Ball or at the Marvel Comics universe where if you go back in time and change your past, you don't change your future, you just create an alternate timeline. I always felt that was an example of lazy writing and it removes a great deal of the emotional, emotional impact of the story away. While reading this volume, I did have some random thoughts that just started firing in my head. For example, in the future, are teens not just cops but 
politicians as well? If so, then will the character of Prez from DC Comics make a cameo? Is this a variation of Logan's run where after you reach a certain age, <clears throat> something happens to you? Or will this be like the world of Legion of Superheroes where kids don't have any rights? Based on the conversation the young has with the commish, are all adults evil? Whenever those quantum mechanics guys would appear in the dark, I, always, I kept thinking that at first they looked like the monoliths from 2001 and Space Odyssey and Sele from Mia and Genesis Evangelion. Once I put on my glasses, I saw that they were actually people, but are those people adults or are they teenagers? I guess we'll find out in the next volume. Also, since when has it been okay for a graduate student to have pink hair? Is this really at heart a Japanese manga? Well, I'm on to you two. Three people in the same shower? This is a New York thing, isn't it? Finally, I give this a recommend. It's a good story with a great lead character, has fun art and writing, and when the story ends, you really don't know what's going to happen next. This volume ends and it forces you to ask questions such as, in that final panel, is that how the world's going to end? Will this become a chase-type chase story? Will more characters from the future come to the past? Will there be more time traveling between the timelines? Will there be more timelines? Like, for example, will they go back to the 1950s, to the uh, 2050s? Will the young stay in New York? Will there be a new cast of characters? How would, the, how would those people that are stuck in the past relate to the people in the past? Also, could it be possible that at some point the young will actually meet her parents? I can't wait until the next issue. Also, the next issue of Rocket Girl will be in October and it's printed by and distributed by Image Comics. And until next time, goodbye. Rocket Man. Rocket Man.